how I got started in this. Um, I guess when I was, you know, when I was coming up, I've always been fascinated with cars and, you know, when I was out there selling drugs, you know, that was one of my purposes for being out there, trying to fix up a car. Uh, once I got out of prison, changed my life, I was working, and I wanted a car fixed up, but I couldn't afford it. So my first income tax check, I bought me a Mustang. It needed some work, but it also had somebody else's signature on it. Somebody else had fixed it up, so when everybody seen it, they were like, that's such and such old car. So I wanted to put my own touch on it, but I really couldn't afford it. Uh, I was working at Sam's Club, and like I said, my first income tax check bought me a Mustang. It needed a top on it. Uh, my birthday was coming up, so I wanted to um, get it painted. I got it painted, and it needed a top on it, so I heard about, actually, this shop right here. And when I heard about this shop, I brought it up here, uh, told them I wanted a black top put on it, Gave him my deposit, paid him for the top, and we had a deadline. Like I said, I wanted the car for my birthday. End up, the car wasn't ready for my birthday. And then I kept getting excuses about my car being ready. So what I started doing, when I got out of work, I started coming up here. And, you know, trying to put that slight pressure on them to go ahead and do my car. Once I started coming up here, I kind of, you know, it was something that I liked, you know. I was fascinated about fixing up cars. I was fascinated about what he was doing on that table over there. I was fascinated about, you know, what I was seeing. So I started coming up here every day, even after my top got put on. I watched him put my top on. Matter of fact, I helped him put my top on. And I still paid him everything that he was supposed to get paid. Like I said, I was, I was captivated. You know, there was something that... I wanted to do. So I came up here every day for probably a year or more uh, after I got out of work and I would help T over there on the table. T taught me how to, you know, make patterns and do what we're doing right now. Doing headlines and uh, the guy who uh, was showing me how to do it, his name was David Bush. And, you know, but the thing about that was, like I said, I came up here for a whole year. I didn't charge him nothing. I didn't look for no money out of nothing. All I wanted to do was learn how to do it so I can do my own car. He would teach us, or he was teaching me everything, how to do everything, but the one thing he wouldn't teach me how to do, and I ain't understand it, but the one thing he wouldn't teach me how to do, he wouldn't teach me how to sew. So I can remember when I was in prison, I read a book on slavery. And in that book, the little girl, the little black girl, tricked the slave master daughter into teaching her how to write her name. She said stuff like, I bet, bet you can't write my name in the ground. I bet you can't write my name in that tree over there. So eventually, her consistently seeing her write her name, she learned how to write her own name. So I took that and every day, I used to, uh, when I get through doing the patterns over there with T, I used to come on this side of the table and I stand up right here and I talk to him. And while I was talking to him, I would focus in on this sewing machine. And I was watching how he was doing that sewing. Then, at that time, the female who I was in a relationship with, she believed in me. Um, she was well established financially. You know, I was standing in some apartments that was pretty much by which I was living in the project. And she believed in me. And she was she was she was help supporting me and backing me up. And she seen how interested I was in this, and she seen how good I was. Because I was starting to take on little jobs now at my apartment. So while I was at my apartment, I was doing door panels, you know, everything I could do without a sewing machine. And it was good. She seen it was good. So she encouraged me to take it a, a step further. And I was interested. And I still was coming up here helping for free. Then she bought me a sewing machine. We paid, she paid $1,400 for me a sewing machine. And 
I did my own car from out of my apartment. My first car I did out of my apartment. When I did that car, I was excited. And I brought that car up here to the shop and I let him see it. He was actually mad at me. And I ain't understand that, you know. And the thing, I said that not to try to belittle him or try to take away from him because I appreciate everything that he taught me. But what I don't understand about a lot of older guys and a lot of the older generation is, you know, we sit back and criticize the young guys about you don't want to do nothing, y'all sorry, y'all want somebody to give y'all something. But when we do try to help, when we do try to do something for ourselves, people try to take advantage of us. And then that that you know that that's that's discouraging. I mean that really hurt my feelings that this this is the man who was I thought was trying to teach me how to do something. Who was interested in, you know, genuinely interested in my future and what was going on with me, me trying to change my life. But oftentimes you have people that's in their life that just trying to get what they can get out of you. I guess he was just out there that free label, you know. And and but he was very upset with me when I did my first car. I brought it up here to show it to him. After that, um, somebody, a couple people seen my car. They started asking about how much I charge to do this and how much I charge to do that. So at that time, you know, T, who uh, is working with me now, was working for David Bush. And after hours, he began to, when he leave from up here, now he was working more than one job. He was working at Walmart. Then when he got out from Walmart, he came up here. And he working, that's another young man. He was working up here, and even after that, when he got off from up here, he would come down to my apartment and help me do patterns and help me do calls. So my first two or three calls was out of my apartment. You know, this is a little, little old two-bedroom apartment. I done turned one bedroom into a workshop area. House smell like glue and whatever, but you know, I was trying not, I wasn't going back to prison. And then there was, a second income that I needed. So during that time, Mr. Bush had counsel. He found out he had counsel. And he got to a point where he really couldn't come up here. And we started, uh, I think a couple, uh, the last car that was up here, me and T ended up having to finish it. And then he, uh, he was still trying to hold on to it and he put him a uh, shed in his backyard and was trying to work from home, but the council was taking over. But eventually, you know, he died. And after he died, I moved straight in. I, I, I came in, I talked to uh, to Thomas Hudson, who is the owner of the shop, you know, and, and I thank him because he gave me a chance. You know, he seen that I was a young man out of prison. You know, not trying to go back. He seen I was respectful. I didn't come up here and I wasn't disrespectful. I wasn't disrespecting any place. I went up here doing things I ain't had no business doing. And he saw that. And he gave me an opportunity and he helped me. So when Mr. Bush died, I came right in and I've been here ever since. You know. But that desire to do my own car. You know, like I said, I still had a fascination for cars, but you know, I just couldn't afford it. And I wasn't finna go back out there in them streets and sell drugs to fix up my car. And risk going back down to the prison, you know, and back up them 25 years. I wasn't finna do that. So, that's how I ended up here at the shop. Uh, it's a lot of details that I left out, but in a nutshell, that's how I ended up here at the shop. You know, and with, with me and T, you know, one of the things I seen also, you know, that he learned even after Mr. Mr. Bush died. And I was, like I said, this is not to belittle him, but this is to show why a lot of our young people, you know, when they try to get out and do something for themselves or when they, you know, trying to go that extra mile and people try to take advantage of them, you know. Found out once he passed, you know, he was playing with his money, lying to him, you know. He was, he was worth way more than what he was getting. You know, so me watching that. You know, I don't play with his money. When we finish a job, he get paid. He get paid when I get paid. I don't lie to him, I don't play with his money. We got a good relationship. So with that, I don't have to worry about him stealing nothing. I don't have to worry about him. Cause he, I do him right, he do me right. We've never had an argument. 
we best friend. That's my best friend. We never had an argument because I don't play with him. I don't play with his money. And anything that I know how to do in return, because he taught me. You know, I try to get him to get over here on this sewing machine, and I still be on him because I feel like this. You don't know, I might not be here tomorrow. That's what I tell him. And then this is something you love to do. You should, you need to know how to do everything up here. I ain't going to be like the last man was. I got to take it to another level. I got to go a little bit further with it. So I, I, I believe in, you know, anything that I know how to do, I'm willing to teach him. And he's willing to teach me. So, and I'm like that with anybody that come up here. You know, that's another thing I don't understand. People ask me all the time, man, why are you showing this person and that person how to do that, man, and they competing with you? Why not? Why not show them? If I say I'm about my people, if I say I'm about the youth, if I say I'm about helping my own and helping anybody, that especially if they're willing to help me, why wouldn't I show them? These guys come up here all the time, want to learn how to do a poster. I tell them, I teach them. The only thing I ask is when you come up here and you respect the place, you don't bring all your homeboy, pull your pants up, and we take care of business, I teach you everything that I know how to do for free because I learned it free. When people who are um, doing this on their own, they come up here, I tell them how to get these books, you know, when they on their own. I tell them where to get the books from. I tell them where they can get, how to get, the, where to get the material from, where to get the best prices. I don't charge them then. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not a person that try to hold stuff to myself. You know, I believe in passing on. I believe in doing for my, I, I, I am my brother's keeper. I believe in that. I don't believe in just trying to, look, well, man, if I show him how to do it, he might make my money, because I believe in it. If some, somebody, gonna, whoever going to spend money with me, if they're going to spend some money somewhere else. You know, if I can help somebody else, keep them going behind them walls. If I can help another man honor that scripture, God bless the child that has his own. If I can put that in somebody else's mind to work for themselves, do for themselves, that's what I'm about. If I say I'm about that, why wouldn't I pass it on? Why wouldn't I freely give it? Freely have I received, freely shall I give. So anybody that's into upholstery and want to learn how to do something, you need to know where to get the book set. You know, need to know where to buy your material at. I don't hide that from you. I'm willing to give it because it saved my life. You know, it helped keep me out the streets. Even when after, after jobs, when I couldn't get another job, this is what held me on. You know, so I thank David Bush for everything that he taught me. And I'm not, I wasn't bitter with him. I wasn't upset with him. But what I have to do as a man now is understand that where he taught me, the things that I learned from him, I need to take it to another level. And the other level is not only teaching what I know how to do, but passing it on. Everything that I know how to do at this shop, I'm willing to pass it on.